Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is the show where we talk about strategies, tactics, and mechanics. And the mechanics. And all the mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. All the mechanics. There we go. Uh, again, last week, sorry for the delay a little bit. It's uh, nephew time and other stuff that went down. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And also, sorry about the uh, audio being a little bit out of whack with the video i don't know what happened with that but uh for those who did uh watch it a little bit later i did rename it like kung fu fighting or something like that uh today uh initially i was going to talk about the effect of retirement and what has really changed in the meta what hasn't changed in the meta but i think i might end up holding that off uh until uh maybe uh, maybe next week's show uh yeah just maybe next week's show uh for those uh i'm still waiting on some pictures uh from people that have listened to the show that won uh from the giveaways so i have two so i I just need a few more pictures and then uh i'll I'll have the hey thanks mike uh you know uh pictures up on the episode okay uh so today we're going to talk about something that I believe if the moment that we crack all of this, it's going to change how you're going to look at the meta. And I'm, I'm going to take you from, from where you are to a, a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. So uh, we're going to talk about the Avengers Roundtable. And, and you might say, but Dark Logos, didn't you say that was initially a crappy resource and it sucked? And that would be correct. I, I did say those things. But something happened recently. And no, I didn't get my butt kicked by a round table. Uh, I was, I got a, a text from a, a friend of mine, a listener of the show, Caleb Woodward. And uh, he was like, I'm working on some tech with the round table and this other piece and i'm like okay so so sometimes like you know i'll listen to people um and then sometimes people will bring up things you know that make me go hmm all right i don't really get it but you know when i talk to you you're going to explain it to me so you know some days passed and it went through my head i was like well what if Brainiac ship had Invincible or Regen, and and then, uh, and then that that's really where this started. Was I wanted to play my Brainiac ship again, but I was like, well, crap, I I don't have the Book of the Skulls, and the Book of the Skulls allowed me to do everything that I needed, and it was mainly Anger's Hammer, uh, Curse Hammer. It you know I could use that too. But it was mainly Angrier's Hammer. I was like, woohoo, yay, I have everything that I need here. And then I pick up Curse Hammer, and then I get stat mods, and, you know, I have stupid level stat mods. I'm in, in auto-hit land with the 14 attack. So it, I was, like, thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I wish I could sort of just get back to that. And then I started asking myself, well, is there any legitimate way of getting back to that? And... I went through all the lanterns and I could get bits and pieces of what I wanted, but not fully have what I was looking for. And then I started looking at the round table. So during work uh, on my downtime, uh, I pretty much made like seven pages of notes of, of every little theory of every way that I was looking at the round table. And mainly what I started to realize was this. I have been looking at ID cards and summons and even, you know, last week's show we looked at the Ultron tech and, you know, I showed you why that's a good thing. But I had looked purely from the summoning standpoint, not from a perpetual flipping of abilities, okay? And and seeing those abilities as consistently useful, okay? And that's a huge deal. And now, now some people might say, "All right, Dark Logos, you're you're talking out the side of your mouth here. You know, none of this is making sense. We we know this resource is crappy. 
why are you trying to sell us you know fool's gold so let's 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 go in and then i'm going to i'm going to give you my full intellectual progression so you can start to see where i started at all the way up to like my summary you know okay so if you hear a rattling it's because i have the mic in the pa- in, in my lap and then i have the paper um in my hands and so i'm balancing the mic in the paper so it's it's a bit rough so if you hear the crinkle of the paper it's sorry it's like the best i can do and it's hot as fire so i have to have the fan on so you know long time listeners you know you know the hum so let's let's get started okay so when i looked at the round table the first thing that came into my mind was all right what is what what's the number one strength that i thought that was obvious and that was to replace one figure at the beginning of the game. So the I'm better suited for these foes. And so that's, this is usually the starting point in the talking points that most of your other Heroclix podcasters have gone into. Uh, mainly that if you find that you have a bad matchup or a figure that does absolutely nothing, uh, you can then replace them with another figure from the round table. So right there, uh, you have a automatic advantage okay so i started to ask myself well what type of characters would i be doing this with and so uh again i write down the concept is when you're countered or hard countered uh you can bring in a a better option not necessarily a counter you got to keep that in mind uh even though you might know your team and, and you might say like all right i got this figure and it does this awesome thing you're not guaranteed to bring in a hard counter to your counter or your hard counter of your core figure. Marvel, DC, it doesn't matter. Your limited uh, range of substitution is an Avenger with an ID card. Okay. So what scale does this work at? Tent pole? Uh, more than Swarm maybe? Uh, can I reload that card if I lost it? Uh, what slot is best uh, for replacement? So these are my my first few grinding starting questions. Okay, so then uh, I come to a rush decision, and my rush decision is this: Iron Man is the number one, number one card out of all the cards, and so it has to be on every team. So that's my rush assessment. And the main reason it, it, it was my, my rushed assessment and, and my first assessment was that the variety of, Iron, variety of Iron Mans that I have, the variety of point scales that I can cover, the, the o- overall offensive power of just about every Iron Man made within the last two years is pretty high. And, you, and his inspiration is just, just really good. So even if you don't summon an Iron Man... Uh, you have a, a good inspiration to use uh, on power two, which I will get into later. But the core element is is that if I'm looking at the beginning of the game, Iron Man is a really good sturdy piece to pick from to replace another character, just on average. Okay. Then. Um, I started taking another step and it's like, okay, so what's the viability point range? So at first I was like, well, how low should I start looking at? And I was like, okay, the lowest I really want to look at is 120 because you're looking at a major attacker starting at that 120 point range. Uh, you can all, you can still make a hundred point character, a main attacker, but the, the amount of flexibility that you have uh, using the round table goes down a lot. Uh, so we're looking at 120 to 225. So above 25 makes replacement very limited. You're 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 replacing with a Thor, a Hulk, uh, maybe an Iron Man, or, or King Thor. You're you're very limited once you start trying to replace a character over 225 points. Uh, so I really wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you're better off just slugging it out, uh, regening, and taking the damage than you are uh, trying to replace that character. Um, So then I I sort of came to this weird conclusion that once you start dealing with higher points, you would think initially, like, well, replacement would be great uh, so that if I have a bad situation, like, let's say I'm running uh, my Brainiac ship and my opponent puts me on a crappy map, 
I could be like, you know what? Uh, I'm getting off of this map. I mean, I'm not getting off this map, but I'm getting, you know, I'm putting Iron Man on and Iron Man's going to do this, this and this, or I'm going to put Thor in uh, for my 225 points. I'm going to play this Thor here. You know, that that that's a lot more viable. Now, again, you start to see like, well, your whole entire support, everything on your team was designed for you to run uh, that that awesome piece that's you know brainiac ship but all of a sudden i'm dropping in thor and thor's you know my my backup guy this doesn't work because you know i had support to to you know deal with that now i have sort of the ragtag bunch that's trying to win a team i mean sorry win a fight so i go from being royally screwed to minorly screwed okay so i I started to realize like higher point replacement isn't necessarily a good thing unless you can guarantee that that replacement is going to solve you know that that one bad matchup so let's say we got gobbly glue man gobbly glue man is rocking the meta hard you know he's kicking everybody in the shin and then giving them an uppercut okay so the only counter to gobbly glue man is graviton graviton yes i said it graviton so we're looking at graviton and we're like oh man graviton team's coming up you know, because Gobbly Glue Man has problems when he's TK'd, he takes extra damage, you know, all this other stuff. So Graviton is just like, ah, gotcha. Okay. But Gobbly Glue Man isn't good against, you know, uh, uh, Power Bomb Thor. And, and for people who've played Hero Clicks for a long time, know the joke. Okay. So now, yeah, you, you've gone from, you, you pretty much have a complete circle. You have power, power bomb, bomb Thor and Globity Glue Man, and and you're you're back now. Is it going to be obvious through the rest of the meta that this is going to be like the the two sides of the coin? Yes. Uh, but I will say this: um, if if it does make it a valid tactic, okay. But uh, again, once we start looking at the higher point replacement, you're you're narrowing down your situations. And whatever your replacement is has to come, you know, you have to plan that out ahead of time. You have to know what specifically, you know, matchup is is the worst for you ahead of time. And a lot of a lot of times people don't do that. Um, A lot of times people don't put in that that research. So it's going to be harder on average at the higher end. At the lower end, if you're just like, okay, I see a shriek over there. I'm going to replace uh, this Hawkeye with triathlon or replace this Hawkeye with. 3d man then yeah you're you're better off so those sort of counters you're you're more flexible and more capable of of dealing with counter picks at lower point values than you are at higher point values okay so if you are looking at high-end replacement so far from the characters that we're just looking at we know who id's cards exist but not necessarily all their incarnations at high end we're looking at quasar war machine uh phoenix buster iron man and thor widow uh as our replacements depending on the situation you also can include uh hulk from avengers uh age of ultra movie set uh mid tier so high tier i'm saying pretty much 200 points and up mid tier is that between that 150 to, to 199 we're looking at phoenix buster iron man silver centurion um avengers initiative uh, sorry invincible iron man uh number one common iron man you, you can start to see the theme here it's freaking iron man um then at your low end you have uh jocasta thor hawkeye black widow uh triath really 3d man uh, I really don't want to put in a substitution for a triathlon. I, I'd rather summon him in. Um, I know a lot of people be like, but he's awesome. Yes, if you have a delivery system and your team has to be built with a delivery system to make sure that triathlon gets in versus uh, summoning him. When you summon him, he's going to be in range to automatically charge flurry versus you getting him into position and then having to defend him like he's a quarterback. And that's a problem. Okay, so... Again, you might end up in a situation where you're like, yeah, triathlon or 3D man is a better option, and I'm not against that. But I will say on average, the way that we're looking at it from a replacement standpoint, 3D man or triathlon are not really good replacement characters. 
Again, we haven't even gotten to power one, power two, power three. We haven't even gotten to that. Okay. We're just talking straight up replacement at this stage of the conversation. Okay. So I, I, I bring a, a, a question to myself. Is Iron Man just the best card? Answer seems to be yes. Most um, range uh, of points and functions of use. He, he just has the most amount of characters. He has more characters than Captain America. He has more characters than Hulk. He has more characters than Thor. He has he has more characters than just about any other Avenger. Okay. Next up uh, is uh, I I skipped over Power One, and in, in my thinking, and the main reason was Power One was useless to me. Uh, because I was looking at purely exploiting constants. But when we start looking at our... Uh, and I, I stick, I, I skip that part and I skip which which cards are on the round table. Because functionally, they don't come into play until I solve other questions first. So you would be saying, hey, Dark Logos, all right, we, when are we going to get into the cards that are going on there? And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But in particular, I want it to sort of sink in that as it stands up front, depending on your starting point, the cards really, the ID cards aren't really as important as what your team needs. If that replacement element is essential, you already have a replacement figure in mind and that card is going to be already there. The rest of the cards and how they work as a deck, and I'm just going to call it a deck because that's what it is. How it works as a deck is the key element for, for us to really think about is the deck mindset. And once we get to slot two, you'll start to, I mean, not slot two, power two, you start to understand a little bit better. All right. So looking at power one, lending moral support at the beginning of your turn, you may choose a friendly character and roll a d6 until your next turn that character can use the inspiration of the id card in that slot now this is a huge incentive to run a six card deck just is it's a huge incentive to run a six card deck uh from one all the way up uh sorry so from slot one uh to sorry dial click one to dial 14 you are rolling a die and technically empowering by the the table one character so it's just yeah you're you're empowering by the table one character so if if you don't see it like that you're you're automatically going to have problems because while summoning in a character is really really uh beneficial there are some other key elements that start to be start to become evident uh, reality number one, whatever you roll is separate than what you summon. Whatever you roll for is a separate effect from what you summon. All right, so let's let's go back into this first part. Lending moral support at the beginning of your turn. Okay, so this is after you summon, because remember, you must summon first. Summoning first is your first action of the turn so let's just say say for giggles i summon jocasta then i pick a character because it's still the beginning of my turn and i roll a d6 now i say okay well i rolled slot five it doesn't have jocasta in that slot okay um jocasta let's say jocasta's in slot one and we'll get into that logic later okay I now, let's say I have um, power of, of, of Rick Jones, plus one attack, plus one damage from range. Okay, so now my entire team has willpower. My opponents do not have, uh, cannot ignore pushing damage. I have Jocasta as an attacker. And the character that I picked... Because again, it says at the beginning of the turn, you may choose a friendly character. Here, um, he, here's the thing, Wiz Kids. You didn't say it had to be a standard character. You, it, 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 you didn't say it couldn't be an ID character. 
I'm just saying. And and you might say, well, they'll they'll clarify that they they haven't yet, to my knowledge. And if so, let me know, and I'll just write it off as a loss. So what it what it means is, you could just be like, I summon in Jocasta, I empower Jocasta by the uh, by the table. Now Jocasta has plus one attack, plus one damage, because I rolled Rick Jones. Okay. Now we're in a whole different ball game. And then the next turn, I'm like, well, uh, I got Gobbly Glue Man. Gobbly Glue Man gets uh, empowered by the the uh, by the table. Okay, he gets Hulk. Now he's going to charge and get plus one attack. So the the main element that comes in is this: I have Jacosta's effect in play. Okay. I'm able to empower Jocasta or I'm able to empower another character on my team. Now that character on my team gets willpower, okay? And they also get the other benefit from the empowered by the the book. I mean, not by the book, empowered by the table, okay? So we can start to see that from start, from, from the jump, we can stack effects when we need it. There are no idle times. Okay. Your opponent can't force you to say, well, homie, uh, you're going to use that plus to attack now. There's nothing your opponent can do to say that. The only thing that your opponent can sort of wait for is for the other shoe to drop. Are they going to stack stats? What 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 effect from the round table he's going that your uh, the opponent's going to get? And uh, what type of uh, other effects are you going to stack on top of that? Now, for those of you who are like, well, I just want to be pure stat, you know, whores. This is wonderful because you can just load your round table full of plus stats. And then technically, permanently, you will always have plus stats. They will be situational like plus one for melee, plus two defense from range, stuff like that. But you will always have plus stats. Okay? So, for those people who are like, well, there's no flat stat mods from the book, uh, I mean, not from the book, from the Avengers Roundtable. That is true. If you make your deck full of stat mods, guess what? It becomes a stat mod table. If you fill your table full of powers, it becomes a powers table. It operates no differently functionally than a power battery. Your whole entire force gets this general effect and you're granted powers. So we're seeing these mishmash mashes of various other resources put together we're seeing team based effects we're seeing single plate based effects but it's not a resource assigned to the whole team but it affects the whole team it has summoning effects that's a lot of cool stuff but it's not at first glance hell even at 15th glance because i've looked at this thing since it came out multiple times i'm just like this is a turd but it, i guess it's it's like that 20th time where i just said okay brain i have nothing else to do today but open mail you know what what can i do with this when forced to do something with it then you can start saying like okay now i i have to milk the cow get get the milk out then then hand churn it to turn it into butter then then take that butter and then put it with the flour and the other milk to make a cake out of it it's not like someone's handing you cake and it's like, mmm, cake. You have to work and get the cake. Okay. So up front, we are already introduced to the idea or the 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 concept of stacking inspirations. No one has talked about this. I'm the first person to talk about this. And WizKids will probably nerf the fire out of this now. Okay. So let's go back to my notes since I'm staying on on uh on track. So, uh, oh, oh, real quick, um, reloading, you really want to, you really want to use, uh, your first and second slot as your early on summons 
And the main reason why is that you have a higher chance of reloading those cards and getting them back later. And you'll see why that's a, a huge deal. But you need to just expect, in general, on average, you're not going to, to get them back. But you're, you're going to see the importance of summoning here in a little bit. Okay, so I go on to power two, and I start thinking, power two, beneficial effects, is it buffs the whole team. Uh, just can't use the same card two times in a row, but I can alternate cards. So uh, there's a figure which will go unnamed because if I tell you the figure I was thinking about this on, you'd be like, I hate you. But alternating between Ares Inspiration one turn and then Wonder Man's Inspiration the next turn. So I'm just like, Ares, heal, boom. Okay, I heal. All right, you beat me up. Wonder Man, now you really can't beat me up that hard. Okay, I'm I'm doing some stuff. All right, clear. You know, I, I clear. All right, cool. You know, some other effect. Yeah. All right, now I can attack again. You know, Ares. Yeah, Ares. Yeah, Wonder Man. I mean, sorry, Ares. Yeah, some other effect. Yeah, Wonder Man. Yeah. So... It, if if you notice if I went if I just went back and forth between Ares and Wonder Man, I'm looking at Steel Energy from range and up close, and I'm looking at Invincible on my other turns. So just alternating that too for if I had a temp pole that was just like, gosh, your damage output is awesome, your stats are awesome, you have no survivability whatsoever. Oh, round table, Steel Energy. And I have Invincible. Oh, cool. I just have to last until two. How am I going to do that? And that's where some of the initial thoughts start turning. So I start breaking things down. So it's like defense and offense is there. It's just a slot question. Um, in, in defense, these are the main cards that you're looking at. Uh, in um, Invincibility from Wonder Man by far is the best defense option. Uh, the second is Super Senses from Spider-Man. Um, and when you're looking at your other defense options, you're, you're like, oh, I got Energy Shield Deflection from Cap. And that's not bad, but it's not a universal help. Now you could say, well, what about the Pulse Waves and the Precision Strikes, Edward? I fully understand that. But you can still plan and say, hey, I, I see that you have Precision Strike. I'm probably, it would be a good idea that I just beat the fire out of that character first so that I know I have that option. Oh, you have the Pulse Waves. I need to kill you first or at least get you off Pulse Wave or make sure your entity can't give you Pulse Wave. Okay, so those are the first things that start coming up. All right. Uh, now, you can't say Jarvis, but I, I, don't, I don't like that because... If the moment that you say Jarvis, Jarvis only has one use. And that one use is to perplex you. And that's sort of crappy. Now, again, I'm just saying that as a summons. Him as a card is really good. But again, if you really, 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 really need that extra perplex, and that's the one thing missing on your team then yeah, maybe early on, a little Jarvis giving you a nice little attack boost to get you over that tough hump, that, that might be what you need for your deck. But you need to think of the concept of your deck first, of what your deck is doing in terms of your team. Okay, uh, going back, and then I say, uh, do defense powers matter? Sorry, do, do defense stats matter or powers? And I, I would say powers over stats now the main reason i say that right now is because the stat modifications are either a flat plus one or uh you're getting a situational plus two and and that's a harder thing to plan around a a if you're looking for consistency then yeah the, the flat plus one is what you need to look at or even the the flat range and movements those are probably better because you know you're going to always get those. The problem comes in is it's always just too tempting to say, I have a range piece. I'm going to put in cap so I have energy shield deflection and I will always be at range. And that is a faulty assumption. 
because you're like, I have a 19D. Now I have energy shield, fool. What's up? Uh, check it. Uh, energy shield. Uh, but you're, you have energy shield every other turn. So then, then that other turn, you're like, uh, 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 uh plus one defense and I'm in hindering. Uh, yeah. And it, it doesn't stop the fact that someone can just come up and melee you. And, and just really think about that. Someone just comes up and melee you and all of a sudden your cap, you know, inspiration isn't that good. Okay, so there, there's some stuff to consider. Uh, but if, if you're going for huge gains, you're going to have a huge gamble. If you're going for moderate gains, then you're going to have a moderate gamble. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is uh, offense. And offense is more diverse. It's it's a lot more diverse. Okay. Uh, and um, I haven't done this in a bit. We're at the 30 minute mark. What I want you to do is this. Just take a brief pause. Pause the show. Go, go get a Coke or something. Um, get some water. Actually, get some water. Don't drink the Coke. Help your teeth. Just drink some water. Um, you know, do some push-ups or something. And then, then come back. Okay. So let's all go to the lobby and grab ourselves some snacks. Okay, so I, I figure you're back now. You pause the show. All right, so offense is more diverse, and this is the huge thing. And I mainly focus on range because we're in a range meta. But if you go look at melee, Hellcat by far is baller. Like, oh gosh, Hellcat and Hellcat and Triathlon. Those two, you gotta have those in your deck. Uh, so at first, it's Rick Jones gives you plus range. It, he, Rick Jones is the best card, like for for offense. He just is. He he's going to give you plus one attack, plus one damage, just flat. And I I can't see running any other card uh, if you're running a offensive deck, just at all. I I just don't see you running any other card. Um, let me or not. Sorry, let me phrase it. I don't see you not running him if you have him. There's no reason to to not run him. So uh, modify attack and damage values by plus one when making a range combat attack. So you 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 don't get that goodness in in the rest of these guys. Uh, Cersei only gives you plus one damage. Hellcat gives you plus two uh, attack value when making a, a close combat attack. And then a triathlon gives you a plus one uh, attack uh, when you make close combat action and modify defense value by plus one against the close combat attack. He doesn't help you against any range. So though there, there's some huge issues here uh, that, that just needs to be addressed, like the, the inconsistencies of values. All right, so first off, like I said, you have uh, Rick Jones. And, and the more IDs that co- ID cards that come out, there could be something better or other ones that are just as good. Uh, but these are the first ones that come to mind. Uh, Iron Man, plus one attack, plus ignores hindering. I, I mean, that's just good. Uh, Spectrum, plus one attack or damage. So Spectrum and Rick, Rick Jones uh, is a very solid al- alternation. Or let's, let's do it like this. I summon in... Uh, I'm on two. Um, at the beginning of my turn, I pick Rick Jones Inspiration. I summon in Spectrum. Okay. Now, I have Spectrum on the field. Uh, I have Rick Jones's Inspiration. Spectrum is giving me, I, I choose plus one attack. So now I have two, one of my, two, all of my characters on my field, uh, plus two attack, plus one damage. That's better than the Book of the Skull with the hammer. You're, it just is. I have plus two attack and plus one damage globally. And and hey, guess what? It's ranged attacks. All right. So there, the, there again comes in is, all right, we start looking at the stacking and how the stacking becomes a lot more consistent. Now I'm talking about my whole team getting double buffed. Not just one figure. Okay. So, uh, and then Hulk comes up as one of the top uh, offensive cards because Hulk allows you to get into melee because he gives you charge. The rest of the melee-based cards do not. 
So you already have to be in a melee position or have the ability to get into melee, which limits you limits you to sidestep charge uh, in hypersonic speed already being on your dial. And you may not have that. OK, now if we're looking at control. If we're looking at control. Uh, there are several cards in mind, but your control is not going to be on the same level as Green Lantern power battery. Your control is. I, I like to call it very soft control um, because it, it, it can sway the battle, but not like huge uh, because you can't stack them all together at once. Like if you would actually, I would really wish you could have two or three of them um, out uh, at once, but um, pretty much you have uh, Jocasta, which pretty much allows you to get willpower, but then your opponent uh, cannot uh, ignore pushing damage. Uh, and that one is actually a really solid one if you can if you can feel your opponent's tempo and be like, well, uh, you have no action token, so I'm not going to use this. OK, you have one action token on your tent pole. I'm going to use Jocasta now as my inspiration. Oh, OK. So are you going to clear or are you going to take pushing damage for attacking me? So there, there's a huge tempo element there. Uh, Jessica Jones uh, she stops outwit from your opponent your opponent can't use outwit so it affects a mega greed uh, and then that, that can be a huge deal uh, protector allows you to use probability control when you're being targeted by an attack uh, Doctor Strange gives you probability when you attack Machine Man just says hey my opponent can't use perplex so this is this is very interesting. This is very interesting because you can start to see if you're trying to build a control deck with the ID cards that it, it's not fully there. And then if you even look at the summons, Jocasta, Jessica Jones, Protector, Doctor Strange, Machine Man, only one of those is a decent attacker um, that you have to pick from. I'll, I'll say two, just uh, Jocasta and Doctor Strange. We don't know what Jessica Jones can do. Protector is man. He's not that good. <laughs> And Machine Man is really not that good. Okay. Now, I, I don't have one on eBay. So this isn't me trying to pump the cost of this one figure, of this one card. But Namor is a wild card effect that if you are running a theme team, is probably one of the best cards to have on your round table. Uh, and again, let's keep in mind, stacking, 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 stacking. Okay, Namor's ability allows you to have the dolphin symbol and plus one all stats if you're in water. If you have a theme team, you pick a water map like Sunken Wakanda. And once you get on two, your entire team is plus one stats. Automatically right there, that puts you in superiority to a power battery. right there every other turn if you're swipping switching between namor and jocasta or or even let's just say it's just a shootout game uh between uh namor and jarvis as your number two inspiration your opponent is having fits again if the, there is legitimacy here uh, but the Namor card is very situational. So until we get another Namor to like say like, okay, I can summon in this Namor, it's all good. Uh, this this is a big gamble because if you lose map and you don't have any way of generating water, then that, there's a problem. But if you can generate water, you, you're, you're going to have a huge boon to your team. All right. So I, I have this comment. The lifeblood is lasting to the mid game to utilize two, the power two. Looking at three or more figures on the field, if not, you have the randomness of, of one, which is, is, is a problem. If, if your team cannot get by the randomness of power one, then it won't work with the round table. You, you have to survive those 14 clicks. Okay. Uh, so 
we start looking at uh, the 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 dial turning before we get into the types of teams that uh, work best with um, with the round table. Now, the main reason I told you that you really want to pack six cards on here is that we are going to have two cards to summon. Okay, card number uh, and the main reason is every time that we summon a character at the end, we're able to roll a D6 and whatever that D6 roll is, is how far we get to turn the dial. Okay. Just pure and simple. Boom. Turn the dial. Boom. Okay. Next turn. Summon a guy. Roll. Turn the dial that much. Okay. So there is advantages to doing that. Okay. There are advantages to doing that. And here's why. If you average between your two die rolls an eight, an eight, it should take you two to three turns to get to power two. Okay. So let's 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 look at it straight up. Alright, so alright, let's let's say your your first turn, you're getting into place and all the other stuff, and you're 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 good to go. Alright, turn two happens. You summon, uh, let's say we summon Jocasta. All right, cool. Summon Jocasta. Boom, you know, Jocasta's attacks, does some stuff. All right. Uh, you, you did some attacks. All right, great. Your opponent hits you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then you, um, you roll your D6. Let's say you roll a four. So one, two, three, four. You're on click five. Okay, you're on click five. All right. You skipped over slot one, but that's, that's fine. All right. Now, we're, we're going, we're going, we're going. Uh, your opponent roll uh, attacks you for, th uh, one of them is for three damage. Okay, so one, two. So now I'm on uh, seven and your opponent misses the other, other clicks. Okay, all right, so I'm on two. Now I could have picked, you know, my card in the second slot, but all right, let's say I didn't. All right, so... Uh, and then the, the reloading, it happens, uh, at the beginning of your turn. Touch the, the, all right. So, you know, coming back, looking at it, maybe have more incentive to have something in slot two, just have your summons in slot two and slot three. Okay. So anyway, so I, I land on slot two and I'm like, all right, boom. All right. Let's, let's just rewind and say like my first summon was, was from slot two. And my last summons is going to be from slot three. So I, let's let's say I re reload slot two because I land on the reload slot at the beginning of my turn. Great. OK. Now uh, on my opponent has has done their damage. I reload. All right. I got my guy back. So I still have a full table. So I'm going to summon. Uh, let's say this time I'm going to summon in uh, Captain America. Captain America comes in. Boom, boom. Does some damage. Good stuff. All right, my, you know, I attack back. All right, so I'm still on seven. All right, roll. Okay, let's, let's just say this time I, I roll a uh, five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. I am on slot 11. Okay, hold on, wait. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, Scott, slot, slot, uh, slot 12. I was like, hold on, wait, that's not right math. So I skipped over slot three. It's like, ah, oh, crap. So I roll a five, slip, skipped over slot three. Yep. So, all right. So I have a nine. So that puts me on slot 12. All right. Right there. So again, let's say my opponent goes full in, uh, hits me uh, with an attack. Boom. I take one damage. So I'm on 13. My, they hit me with another attack. I take two damage. I'm on 14. All right. And they hit with another attack and I, I take one more damage. Boom. I'm on 15. I'm on uh, reload slot four and I'm on power two. Okay. So you can start to see just rolling those two ID cards put me in a really good position because if not, I would be on slot six and I would have taken a good ton of damage. Okay. So you have to burn through two cards at least. To get to that magical two land. And magical two land is where you are fighting it out. 
this is this is where the battle for for Cybertron begins because if if you can't win with you alternating between the two stagnant power these two powers or whatever's on your uh, in your deck that's left you're you're going to lose okay all right so those those are the the key things like we can start to see with turning the dial once we get on two we don't have to aggressively turn the dial i mean we can if we want to but aggressively turning the dial once we're at two causes one major huge problem we will hit three and initiate the end game and if we are not in a good position when we initiate three we are screwed please understand that if you are not in a good position when you initiate three you are screwed all right so um let's let's talk about the glory of three before i go into the types of teams that work well so I told you before, we have two cards that we're going to burn in our deck. Then we have three cards that we probably want to rotate for their bust, but they're overall pretty decent. Okay. Then we have, I call summoning Goliath. And I don't mean Goliath the figure, but I mean the broke dude. Okay. Here's the thing, and I'm going to read to you. Uh, power three, and this is going to be something that a lot of people overlooked, and I think WizKids overlooked it too. And and I'm going to explain to you why some of power three is dumb, really dumb. All right, Avengers Assemble. At the beginning of your turn, give any number of friendly characters power actions. For each one given, now note, you stay on three, so you can just keep doing this. For each one given, remove an ID card attached to this resource and place it, its ID character adjacent to the character given the action. This game, that character is no longer an ID character. All those restrictions are gone. Okay. Can't It can't ignore pushing damage and returns to your sideline when it takes damage damage now you can't turn past three so there is no reload okay so why is this stupid dumb note when you treat a character as an id character they have to be equal or less points when you use avengers assembled they can be any point value as long as you assign that character to that card now, you might say, Dark Logos, that's dumb. That's not how it works. And I would say, read the power again. They are no longer ID card characters. So all the restrictions for ID card characters is gone. Uh, you can split and you can merge them and remove all of the negative crap that comes with them being uh, summon in guys. And all of a sudden, you have some brokenness. Uh, even more, uh, just to sort of emphasize this point, you can have War Machine Prime and the, the most highest expensive point Iron Man you want. Get to three. Bring them both out with two Paul characters that are left on your force, okay? Have those two characters... Uh, the War Machine and Iron Man merge into Iron Man War Machine and then the following turn split back into those same characters at their same point value and have none of the effects carry over. There you go. So yeah, this is BS and that's why Iron Man is probably one of the most dumbest characters for the ID cards. So Going back to three, and this is why I said if you're not in a good place on three, if you summon all these guys in, okay, these are still power actions that count against your turn. And let's say you summon in three guys that in the, and you don't have any leadership. Guess what your opponent is going to do? Attack one, kill your first summon, attack two, kill your second summon, attack three, kill your third summon. Uh, yeah, and you don't have any special oogly powers to, to save yourself anymore. And I have my full resource. You're screwed. So 
three is not something that you rush down. Three is something that you plan for. Three is, okay, guess what? Nothing up my sleeves. Abracazam. Boom. Now you're screwed. Okay. So there you go. So there, there's, there's, there's a lot to think about with three. And I know previously I was like, oh my gosh, check this out. But it, it is good. The downsides are real strong. But when we, we rewind back and we start seeing, saying like, all right, split and merge is the, my n- number one thing I need to think about. And, and the other thing I need to think about is this. The guy that I summon in, does he have crazy survivability? Can he sp- split and, or merge? And, can he merge into some other duo that's awesome and broke? And more importantly, uh, can he uh, or, or she or whatever robot uh, deal a major attack? You can only bet they're going to land, do one attack. Can they land this major attack to just completely make my opponent wet themselves? If so, I win. And that's really all they have to do. So you, you start to understand what I mean by the lifeblood of what you are doing is in two three is your hail mary pass it better go off because if three fails you're boned you're boned you might as well call the the smithsonian and and put yourself up on display okay so let's let's start looking at some some teams here that are are really good with this tech uh the first up is the don't die tech uh because really since they don't die they don't have to worry about damage taken, so they can turn the dial uh, rather consistently. It's very slow, but they can turn the dial very consistently. Uh, pros of don't die. Uh, constant damage taken uh, with little side effects. Uh, most teams will not be able to counter the table, if at all, or, or the effects of the table. Uh, benefits from either stats or aggressive powers uh, 100% of the time. So if you want to go all stats or all powers or a mix of both, you can. And the don't die tech just gets stupider. It, it becomes more flexible than it should be allowed to be. Uh, not so much. You don't get too much from defensive powers except for Spider-Man super senses. Uh, cons. Most don't die tech has low stat um, figures and their mobility is low. So you have some problems. Also, a lot of don't die tech was also dependent on some other outside source of early and permanent recovery. You don't necessarily can guarantee that. Definitely why you're going through those ones. You can try to make it a little bit quicker with the two summons, but you you really can't. The other risk as well is that if you put in two soft summons, your opponent is going to dogpile on your summons and kill the summons since they can't kill your don't die tech. That's that's just the reality. They're they're going to put everything in on it. So you have to be really, really careful with the don't die tech. Uh, The grasshopper in the corner tech is another con uh, may not work. uh, Because the grasshopper in the corner was dependent on having barrier like free barrier so that when given the chance, double power action, get off the map and then get into another corner so that the don't die characters can keep coming back. All right. Uh, Next up is what I call a generator team. Uh, It generates pogs like Ant-Man is a generator team. Uh, It it, uh, Rick Jones is part of a generator team. Uh, The Iron Man that summons in the Iron Legion is a generator team. If you're able to bring in additional figures outside the game, Maximus, for example, you you're on a generator team. Um, and And I'm mainly looking at teams that focus on generating additional figures. Uh, The pros. Uh, Free pogs and and guys to take damage uh, to turn the dial. So your opponent nukes Captain America pog from Rick Jones. Guess what? Your team took damage. Turn the dial. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Pogs benefit from the buffing. So if you have Doctor Strange and says, oh, when, you know, attacking, uh, all characters get probability control or your whole entire team has perplex or your whole entire team gets plus one stats because you're in water great your pogs benefit too those ants become scarier you know uh, 11 attack and 4 penetrating damage like with exploit and blades like yeah that's not great I I wouldn't want to fight that Uh, neutral 
element massive pog wipe sets up your resource you're talking about crazy turns of the dial like someone just comes in pulse waves all your your fodder massive pog wipe uh sets up your resource but sadly you lose all your fodder uh negative uh after fodder wipe the team is very vulnerable and the ability to rally on uh rally on three uh, figures is almost impossible. You lose the uh, main. It, it, you if you lose your main figure that you're generating uh, these pogs from, you're you're pretty much done. All right. Uh, the next type of team that we're looking at is the swarm uh, established pogs, like the pog stack and uh, hybrid of swarm and pog stack uh, teams. Uh, pros: Your team is designed to take hits. Mainly uh, Pog stacks. They only lose one token. In higher point games above 500, you're able to regenerate Pog guys. So even more so, this resource has a, a place. Uh, damage can be absorbed. Uh, uh, yeah, damage can be absorbed uh, without being crippled. Uh, more rally mechanics built in. Uh, more than enough figures to use the team buffs. Uh, Namor card on water map will be killer. Uh, it lives on, on power two, then kills on, on power three. So uh, let's, let's look at, um, for example, uh, example Goku's uh, Pog Tech from last year, his Swarm Pog Tech. Technically, it's a hybrid where uh, he had a bunch of Pogs and it was a theme team because he had uh, two Blind Owls, I'm sorry, one, one Blind Owl and two Weasels and then the uh, Bill Agent Aang. And the rest were Pogs. So if we run, if we make some changes and we say like, all right, uh, we take out a Scott, we keep Scotty's Warbot, we take out a, a Blind Owl or we, we take out a Weasel. Uh, yeah, we take out a Weasel, take out another Pog, put in an Ultron drone or something like that. Okay. Still the same crux of the team. And then we're able to, you know, say like now Scotty has Invincible once we get on to two. Now we have to sacrifice some fodder, but the team still functionally works. Okay. You might, and I'm just saying hypothetically, might have to do an additional summons. Uh, so you might have to do three summons instead of two. Cons. Uh, can't summon in good strikers. And that's why I said you have to think about Ultron. Uh, you're, you're looking at, that 100 to 120 point range and why most of them aren't bad they're not great either uh forced to play ultron drone to cover weakness so sometimes you're just breaking your theme team so you really can't depend on that namor shard because i mean not namor shard that namor card because you may not even be uh able to pick, have a good odds of picking map uh high damage burst kills the team too fast to build up so if you're hit for three or more damage on a standard swarm team that sucks because let's say you're hit with seven damage your your figure got one shotted you're only going to net two clicks versus if you got hit by three then hit by three again and then die where you would have netted netted four clicks that would have been a lot greater but no you got one shotted so the, the amount of clicks that you can generate off of the damage taken is a huge problem, which, which in turn, it puts a lot of tempo control in your opponent's hands. Definitely, if they, like the hugest counter to all this is Mystic's damage and Orange Battery and unavoidable damage that you can generate. All that stuff does not turn your table. And there's nothing that you can do to force turn your table other than do summons. So that's that's a huge problem. So like, let's say you roll a one and a two on your summons. You are in trouble. You are in huge trouble. Okay, so uh, let's let's go to the the next thing in my notes here. Uh, colossals, vampires, stop clicks, and zombies. All of these characters and archetypes benefit from the round table. Uh, all three mechanics can stretch out a game, and that is what you need. You have to be able to, to say, all right, I can go and absorb 15 clicks of damage. 
and not be in trouble. Uh, Colossals definitely have this ability. Uh, Vampires, as long as they stay up close and you can make a very powerful melee deck, yeah, they just stay on top of you and just be like, bam, bam, you hit me, I don't care. Bam, bam, plus two attack this turn, plus one attack, plus one defense next turn. Oh, okay, plus two attack this turn, boom, I'm still energying off of all of this. What, what, you're at range now? Ares card, what's up, homie? Still energy from range, boom. Okay, so you, you, you're never at a disadvantage uh, with vampires. Uh, stop clicks. This is this is a tricky one because I all your just about all your stop clicks give you a regen option, and regen stalls out the game. As long as you can regen and get back up, you're you're good to go. Um, also, cheapo characters like Chillablane that at first and twentieth look are crappy with a round table is pretty good on a swarm. Because your opponent is guaranteed, unless I think they had Pulse Wave uh, or Jenny, to have to dedicate three attacks to kill him. So three, three or more attacks to kill him. So that's 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 pretty big. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, zombies. This is this is the stuff right here. Because if you thought you hated Zombie Super Scroll before, if you thought you hated him before, this this here, this this what I'm about to tell you right here, is is about to make you hella pissed off. Because let's let's look at this. I can still do the the Liddy Maller uh, Black Hand theme team stuff. Then you if you get to two. You're alternating between, oh, I have poison on this click. Let me get Ares Steel Energy. Okay, I have Steel Energy on this click, or my opponent's about to light me up. Uh, I'm going to use that invincibility now, since they don't have Pulse Wave. Oh, okay. Um, they're going to probably push to try to kill me. I got some food tokens, but they're really low. I'm going to use Jocasta. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, yeah, guess what? You're... You're really, you got all that super senses. I'm going to use Shang-Chi. I'm, I'm going to get Precision Strike now, and I'm going to use it from range. So, I, I kid you not, this is by far one of the dumbest options that is on the table, is, this, is the zombies. And it's not just Super Scroll. Um, <clears throat> anyway, here, let me, let me go into it. Uh, let, me, let me cover Colossals real quick, because I sort of skip over them. Uh... If there is a regen card in the future, the Colossals will be very playable with this resource almost unstoppable. Because being able to alternate between regen and invincibility, uh, being able to alternate between regen and steel energy, uh, being able to colossal push to perpetually regen, and just keep eating damage from their opponent to keep turning that dial, there is little to no disadvantage the entire time. If that Colossal has Mystics, you have to one shot the colossal and many times you can't do that okay uh so so the, these are just things to to be aware of uh zombies coming back extends the game minorly okay they need the aries card and the wonderman card like i already said before uh super scroll benefits the most from uh two the power two uh, he can get stats or powers, which, and I didn't really talk about that when I ranted on Super Scroll. The stats element covers a huge weakness on Super Scroll. Because if you run him with Black Hand or any other entity that, for that matter, you can up his attack or his defense or whatever. But with, uh, if, if you're running him with a battery, then yeah, you have plus one all stats except for um, damage. Namor car gives you the same option, except it goes on and off. But you're also able to just say, all right, well, I, screw that. I have plus two melee attack from Hellcat. Now what? All right, what, 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 what you going to do? So that, that can be a very huge uh, boon for uh, Super Scroll. In particular, definitely when he needs to get uh, 
steal energy off. Or even you can say like I have Hulk, um, I I can pick Flurry. Be now I'm getting charged from Hulk, uh, and and I'm getting plus one attack, and so I can get you know from my entity another plus one attack. I can pick Flurry uh, and steal energy. Oh no, I have steal energy on my my dial, so I can pick Precision Strike, and then I can pick Invincibility and Prob. So even though I have all these like cool power, you know, combinations and, and, and whatnot. You can start to see with the ID cards, the amount of flexibility that Super Scroll gets is no longer stagnant. Uh, he can he can be very insane, uh, more insane than he can by having just about any other resource minus the Phoenix Force. Yeah, I would say the Phoenix Force is the, probably the only other thing that would make him stupider. All right, so. So, uh, next up is uh, Doctor Doom uh, to look at for zombies. Uh, Doctor Doom, well, here's the list of my zombies. Doctor Doom, Morbius, Gladiator, Magneto, Electro, Sabretooth have to be re-examined as, uh, as figures. Uh, they, they really do for a couple of reasons. Okay, so let's, let's start looking at uh, that list. I already went into Super Scroll. Um, and, and why he's just stupid. He just becomes more stupid. Uh, Morbius, he's a combination of vampire and zombie. So having permanent steel energy plus the ability to come back. And I, I'm going to say this. He's 160 points. If you're able... And, and if we get a flurry card, he's, 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 he's going to be meta. Um, and even if we don't, Hellcat makes him stupid. Um, you're able to pick up an ultra heavy. You just go in there, whack a dude with the ultra heavy. Now you have, you've healed up. You have shape change. Uh, you can you can take some damage as long as you approach properly. Uh, him being empowered early, earlier on is is an issue. But if you can figure out a way of getting him into position, and then just making it sure that he's like just always up in his opponent's face. If Red Hulk gives poison. Oh gosh, he's going to be giving food tokens out the wazoo. Uh, I mean, he's going to be getting getting food tokens and handing out a lot of virus tokens. But uh, if if you get on any of your stealth clicks, you can go into Hulk. So Hulk helps you out, gives you that plus one attack. Uh, there there is a lot of good stuff, so that you're never just at a disadvantage. And then, of course, Wonder Man gives you that invincibility to help you survive. Spider-Man gives you super senses. Uh, so just overall, you are he, he's, he's more viable because his biggest weakness is his attack value. And you can solve for his attack value and his mobility issues uh, from click 7 to 9. Okay? You can, you can just solve for it now. All right. Uh, next up uh, is Gladiator. Now, I did sort of say one-man armies, this isn't like the best of best options, but Gladiator gives us an interesting situation where uh, we're able to running shot Pulse Wave from jump and, and get out there, do tons of damage. Now, we're able to take it a step further. If, if we're taking this, this damage, we can put it on the, the Ares card and just say, all right, I'm going in after I do my initial pulse wave. Uh, I'm getting hit from the invincibility. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm knocking it down, knocking it down, knocking it down. All right, I'm on hypersonic speed. Give me that Hellcat card, plus two to melee attack, and I'm just meleeing you. Uh, I can, you know, or I can use that Rick Jones card and, uh, and just say, screw it. You know, I'm, I'm going to get plus one attack, plus one range. I mean, sorry, plus one, plus one attack, plus one damage. And just, you know, put everything on, on RCE and I'm going to blast you for seven damage. Okay. You know, there, there's a lot of flexibility. If, if, the, if your defensive stats are, are really high, you can be like, well, Rick Jones card, uh, plus two on attack, uh, plus the one I'm getting from the Rick Jones. So I'm a 13 with five damage. And we're talking mid dial. We're not even talking top dial. Uh, just getting access to steel energy permanently, uh, or not permanently, or semi-regularly, uh, just makes him stronger, way stronger. 
you can play the melee game or the range game. Either or, he's going to be a lot better. Uh, Magneto. I, I think he probably can fight against Super Scroll. And I'm saying probably. I'm not guaranteeing it all the time. Uh, and, and here's why. Again, let's start looking at Rick Jones. Startup empowerment makes him 11 attack 4 damage. Okay. He also has uh, the uh, attraction to meet. Give Magneto a power action. He can use Telekinesis twice as a free action. These both can be attacks to TK out uh, objects. Uh, when he uses it to place an opposing character, deal it one penetrating damage. So you can use your TK and just be like, well, I get plus one to attacks, ranged attacks, so now I'm an 11. All right, so now I have, I've damaged the enemy. You get two food tokens. I get, I mean, I get two food tokens. You get two zombie infection tokens. All right, so I'm, I'm setting this up. Uh, mag, uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic field propping me up. Magneto can use energy shield deflection, so he's already getting a stat mod from range, so he doesn't need cap. Uh, toughness, okay, so he can benefit from Wonder Man. Uh, when a character targets Magneto with a ranged combat attack, modify its damage value by minus one. So definitely Wonder Man in particular makes Magneto stupid because I'm already knocking your damage down by one once you attack me. Then I'm using Invincible to cut it in half after that. So if you started off and you were going to hit me with a 5 damage, I'm going to knock that down to a 4, and I'm going to knock that down to a 2. If you were going to hit me, let's say hypothetically, uh, for 8 damage, I'm going to knock that down to a 7, knock that down to uh, 3 damage. So it's you reduce a ton of damage with that little ability if you're playing standard whiz kids um on a standard whiz kids map and not in a rock if you play on fallen asgard with magneto uh and and, and he has invincible it's it's even worse because once you're in the world tree you you reduce damage down uh damage is, is reduced down by one then this effect by another one then invincible would kick in and then cut it in half. So if if they would hit you for four, it would get knocked down uh, to three, then knocked down to two, then Invincible would knock it down to one. So yeah, it's it's that dumb. It's it's that dumb of how strong this can be. Okay. Um, uh, who else is on my list? Doom, Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom's on there because he again he doesn't have anything special other than the uh, barricaded in my castle of traps. Doctor Doom can use barrier when blocking terrain is destroyed by an opposing character after action is resolved. Deal that character one penetrating damage for each square, uh, square or wall. Now here's the here's the name the the cool thing. He has all this damage reduction. You just be like Spider Man. Now I got super senses. Uh, Ares card. Yep, now I got steel energy. And Hulk, I have charge when I need it. He 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 can get his food tokens out. He also can wild card. So for a turn, he can wild card off of your summons. So that's a really positive as well. And then let me check my notes here. Electro and Sabretooth. Okay. Electro... Electro has always been that cheap, awesome attacker, but uh, that lightning rod of the damned, Electro can use energy explosion. When he does, he does not need line of fire to uh, to one target within range if that character has a virus token. So that's huge. And just, just overall. And then you're talking about uh, potentially uh, getting Electro's attack up to an 11 or 12. Uh, uh, using the ID cards he doesn't have damage reduction so making sure that he gets access to invincibility eventually I think they're going to give us invulnerability but let's just say invincibility because we know that we're definitely going to run that uh, having access to super senses would be great also having access to precision strike to pretty much guaranteeing that he always lands a hit uh, will be good I'm betting uh, one of the cards is going to give us an energy explosion it's either going to be captain marvel 
or it's going to be War Machine. I'm betting it's War Machine uh, that's going to give us Energy Explosion and, or RCE, and then you have access to that. Uh, but, uh, well, never mind. He has Energy Explosion. I take that back. So, him with damage reduction, uh, plus being able to use uh, Lightning Rod of the Dam to, to heal back up, using Ares card, using still energy from range from all the shots that he's taking, he's going to be highly sustainable. Stupid level at sustainable. Uh, more than if he was using the Black Lantern battery. So once you start looking at pairing him up, he fits on a lot of teams. Uh, he already did fit on a lot of teams, but he has more potential now with something that's built around him. And then um, Sabretooth. Uh, Sabretooth is, is strong for a couple of reasons. First off, again, Ares card. Second off, Wonder Man card. Uh, then you can start playing around with all of your melee options like triathlon uh definitely with him since he has battle fury so that's a that's a big deal uh that you can like i said you can make a deck that really fits him uh to a t does it make him play better with other zombies <gasps> not really i wouldn't say so uh but it, it, it's good enough uh, let's see. So those are those are the zombies. Uh, team bases. Since these re this resource isn't assigned a team base, and team bases can't be assigned a resource, there are team bases like New Mutants that really could make this dumb. But there are other resources that, like Green Lantern Battery, I feel that serves them a little bit better. That's me right now. Talk to me in, in a month or two. I'll probably be like, no, I was high that moment. That was wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what, I, what else I have here. More cards left uh, to be revealed. There will be more. We know there are going to be more. The problem is we know most will be stat buffs. I, I don't think WizKids is still going to be handing out powers like candy. I think... Um, I'm I'm going off of what I see here on the ID cards. And I'm going to list off the ones I like I think I've said in the past like which ones I think are going to be stat buffs and which ones are going to be powers. But uh, I really think that Black Panther is going to give us outwit. I think uh what's his name? Black Knight's probably going to be a stat buff. Uh Miss Marvel might give us hypersonic speed if they're high if they're high if not it's going to be transporter which is a lot more reasonable but again it's whiz kids they they gave us angrier's hammer people uh or hypersonic speed could be on quasar but quasar most likely is going to be plus two attack from range or plus two damage from range or something like that quake is going to give us quake she just is uh she hulk is most likely going to be giving us uh whatchamacallit um super strength if not some form of the outwit uh immunity uh shield now these these are the ones that i'm most afraid of shield priority access and shield reinforcements these two right here these are the scariest ones that we're going to see and you're going to be like but dark logos really like those are going to be scary these little tiny shield guys that we're going to summon no 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 these dudes are going to be dumb. And here's why. Okay. I am betting. This is this is my magical whiz kids bet. Shield level one will give you enhancement or empower. But you have to summon in a guy, a character uh, that's like less than, you know, 50 points with the shield team ability and shield in its name. Okay. Level seven is going to be a character with the shield keyword. Hear me, people. Hear me. It's going to be the shield keyword. And it's probably going to list like Agent Coulson, Nick Fury, uh, any of those people. But it's probably going to say, can you, uh, you can bring in any character with the shield keyword, uh, a standard name, 
a name that does not have shield in its name and is over X amount of points, like over 45 points or something like that. Okay? That's my bet. Lock it in. Call me on it later. Okay? And, and anybody listening to this in the future, just be like Dark Logos and them psychic powers, son. Dark Logos and the psychic powers. Uh, I know we're long, but I'm almost done. Uh, we're at 120. So uh, let's all go to the lobby and grab ourselves some snacks. Are right, you back? All right, cool. Let's, we're wrapping this up. But it's, if we, we're going back and we're, we're looking at this, like, all right, War Machine is most likely going to be Energy Explosion or RCE. Uh, or we're going to get RCE from Bucky or we're going to get plus two from range. Uh, Moon Knight, he's most likely going to give us like a plus one uh, to melee defense or plus two from melee defense. Or he's going to give us like Battle Fury or something like that. Uh, Spider Woman is going to be a plus stat. Uh, or, and then Venom is definitely going to be Shape Change. Like, come on. Red Hulk, most likely Poison. Okay. So if we look at those and then we scroll on down and then we can say this. Swordsman, probably going to give me Blaze Claws Fangs. Tiger, a high chance to give me Blaze Claws Fangs. Sentry, f- screw it. He's going to give you hypersonic speed. Why? Because WizKids is dumb. And Captain Marvel, defend. Let's just say that. Or some weird stat modification. Okay, some baller stat modification. I do not see them giving us regen with who they have left. Now, if there, wo- if there was a Wolverine card, I'd, I'd just throw my hands up in the air and just say, I don't know. Okay. But as, as, if they don't give us regen, if they don't give us regen, we're, we're looking at a, a ton of, of stat mods that just makes freaking zombies and a bunch of other stuff just stupid. Okay. All right. So let, let's wrap this up. Um, is there a tipping point? Is there a tipping point where we start going, we're going to start saying, you know, the, the round table needs to be looked at. And I think the tipping point powers are, are going to be uh, support. If, if we're able to get support, uh, empower, uh, enhancement, poison, pulse, wave, and regen. I think that those are going to be the tipping point powers because definitely when you're looking at two, power two, and I don't have to summon in a guy to get pulse wave. I just have it. And I have running shot or I have TK or I have whatever else. That's really good. And now you have characters that normally wouldn't have used it in the past. Can with, with zero range, all of, all of a sudden have a range of one to single target pulse wave. It's, it's, it's a game changer. Uh, so the enhancement, imagine this, you summon in a character, that character gives you enhancement and your whole entire team enhancement. And then all your team, except for this magical super ranged attacker that you just summon in are just sitting in a nice row to give plus three damage to your super range combat expert, 12 range shooter, who then just takes all that attack power and put, I mean, all that RC and puts it on their attack, raising it up to a mighty 14 to shoot your opponent for six damage. You can start to see how that can be a problem. Now, multiply that by three to four attackers. You're going to have a bad day. All right, so... Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, mainly looking at it, we're probably looking at our reload slots being the main reload slots. The slots we were hoping to reload are going to be slots two and three instead of one and two. Our big behemoth guy is probably more likely going to be, no matter what, going to be coming out of slot six. Uh, or even slot one. Uh, then, let's see... Uh, you will burn a summon card or two, know what those two or three cards are a- ahead of time. And you have uh, one, uh, sorry, two to three buff cards and then one Hail Mary card. Uh, if you're able to take 14 clicks of damage with any character and survive and not have it, you know, be a problem whatsoever, then lo and behold, you have a magic character for this resource. So, other than that. That's it. 
I I know this lecture has been, you know, two hours on your end, uh, but this is literally a whole day's worth of thought for me uh, that I've condensed down into this little bit. Uh, all right, uh, that's the end of today's show. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this episode. Uh, so episode 150 is coming so just make sure that you uh, email me your questions it's a uh, AMA format uh, and uh, definitely looking forward to hear of your your questions also if you haven't already sent me the pictures uh, if you're a contest winner if you haven't already sent me your pictures please do I am missing a few uh, say hey thanks Mike for the cool stuff that uh, you donated all right, uh, you can uh, follow my musings uh, at Start Over Pod it, on Twitter. Uh, it, it came from outer space and told me, man, uh, we need to get some snacks. Uh, definitely check out all my random musings and other cool stuff there. Uh, you can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it all, 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 all awesome, baby. Uh, let me know how your Age of Ultron Month 2 is doing. Is it is it going better? Are you feeling the robot love? Uh, and uh, you can uh, email me. Like I said, email me at Starting Over Podcast. You can also follow me on the blog at startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com. There you can see the buy list or anything uh, that I feel like I need to write down in some sort of elongated fashion. Also, uh, you can donate to the show uh, from... Uh, the website you'll get a link to my paypal account uh new shirts up literally right now uh t public uh i have a phoenix nest shirt uh win lose start over so uh definitely uh check that out uh like i said before uh oh you can go check the t public link it's in the uh information below uh like i said uh this summer's special shirt is the standard logo starting over podcast show shirt with the white square so uh like i said in the future anybody with a white square shirt will have a og shirt from this i mean from the end of summer uh onward i'm going to be uh getting rid of that image so it's going to be a, of a limited time uh so definitely uh the phoenix nest shirts uh definitely wear them if you head to a rock or any other major event or any uh Cool event along with your uh, fellow hero, hero clicks players just let them know like hey uh i supported dark logos and phoenix nest team with this cool shirt so like i said uh they're new and they're on sale new shirts 14 dollars uh standard starting over podcast shirt is 20 dollars right now uh if you're in the future i'm sorry it may be full price or on sale depending on how t public looks at it uh if you want to uh have me mentor you uh email me uh, don't put it in the comments because sometimes the comment email doesn't come to me. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. That's it. Uh, and remember, we have to start over sometime.